Is this your last class before you go off? Yes. Yes, uh, so this is my last Shaila, class. Shaila time. Shaila time, yes. Shaila time. <laughs> uh, yes, no, well, that's good. I'm okay. glad you've got Shaila time. Uh, yes. That's awesome. And, okay, so you're in live. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks, Harry. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow, hopefully. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Right. Welcome. Welcome everyone who is in watching the class. We will be starting in about four minutes or five minutes. And uh, so collect your coffee or your tea. We're going to do upcycling household items and mementos. I hope you will enjoy. I will see you soon.
and mute and cover myself. Hi, Gwendolyn. Lovely to have you in class. <clears throat> Welcome to class. Great to have you with me. There should be others joining us shortly so we can start. Would you like to tell me where you're from? You can either type it if you don't want to speak. Um, which part of, I presume, America you are from? Okay, not, not a problem at all. We're going to be doing today all your mementos that you have, all the things that are standing on shelves or packed away very nicely and put away in the attic or put in the garage, and they're not being used. They are just wasting away. So we're going to find some good uses for different things that you have and hopefully you'll be able to take some of them out of their wrapping or take them off the shelf and use them in an interesting way. So let's see, I want to wait about a minute for them to come. I'm not sure what time it is for you, probably quite late. For me it's midday on the next day because I'm in Perth, Australia. So we are about to go into the afternoon and you're just about to go into the morning or close by. Right, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start sharing my screen so that we can begin. Welcome everybody who is here online. Um, all right, let me start screen ah oh, here comes melinda let's just wait for melinda to come in i can greet her too hi melinda lovely to have you in class again awesome to see you back again you and gwendolyn are here so far there should be about eight or nine people so we'll wait and see if the others turn up or not Right, I'm going to do some screen sharing with you and then we can begin. To, and if you've got anything you would like to say at any time, please feel free to either hit your space bar, which unmutes you, and then you can talk and then you just release your space bar and you go back to mute or just to interject at any time. Right, so let's screen share. Right, now I'm hoping my computer is going to behave itself. It was playing up just now and not allowing me to do what I wanted. Today we are upcycling mementos. Just looking at the three pictures that we've got. An old bicycle that you used to ride when you had your children. And it's been sitting in the garage gathering dust. You can clean it up nicely, take off the seat, put a piece of wood where the seat was. And your handlebars, we usually take those off as well because they kind of stick out a bit far. And you can use your bicycle as a stand. And you can put anything you want on it. They put their basin on it. Um, I've seen people put pot plants on it. I've seen it be turned into a mini table as a feature in a living room. So there are many different ways you can upcycle your old bicycle and use it in an interesting way. A friend of mine did cut their bath in half. I didn't find it that comfortable until they put some really big cushions on. Once they put the big cushions on, then it was quite comfortable to sit on. But before that, it really felt like you were sitting in a bath. An old suitcase, if you've got any animals, dogs or cats, they love your scent. They love the smell of you. So they are very happy to take up residence in an old suitcase, particularly if the suitcase has traveled the world with you and you really have got such good memories. Let the cat enjoy those memories too, or the dog. And in that way, every time you see the suitcase, it reminds you of the wonderful times that you had. 
Now, at, as uh, Melinda knows, I'm not sure about Gwendolyn, I live in Australia, I live in Perth, um, I have been an educator for 44 years. But what I enjoy now is not educating, but sharing ideas in Get Set Up with my peers. And for me, this has been a great thing to do. I also enjoy creating and making things, including puzzles, and I have a great love of animals. That's why I do my animal series on um, animals of Australia and animals of Africa. So let's begin. What were these things originally? The first one, the first one here is in fact a bicycle tire. And this bicycle tire, they have taken, taken it to a place where you cut glass and um, mirrors, and they've cut it the right size so that it fits inside your bicycle um, tire. And it serves two purposes. If it falls off the wall, it does have a chance to bounce before it lands and less likely to break. But it also is a very attractive way. All you do is paint it up. If you want, don't want to use it as a bicycle tire, you can paint it with acrylic paint and it really looks stunning. Any thoughts, anybody? That's nice. Ah, that's good. Thanks, Gwendolyn. Uh, the next one is using your old ladder. Now, I use my old ladder in many ways. You can either have it in a room against the wall, it's not very wide, put some shelves on and you've now got shelving either as a bookshelf, you can use it as a shelf to put all the things in the bathroom on. I use it out on the patio because I've only got a small table and if I've got people, the two or three of us sitting for lunch, there's not enough room to put the food on the table as well as um, us to be able to use it. So I use my ladder, put some pretty serviettes over it and place the food on the ladder. Then people can help themselves from the ladder and come and sit at the table, which then allows us to have the freedom of space and be able to see the food and go backwards and forwards and get what we wish to get. So your ladder can be used in many different ways. It can also be used as a bookshelf, so there, there's just no end to the use of an old ladder. Your kettle, you've used it, you've had many fun times with it, but the element has finally said, uh -uh, end of my life, I'm tired. Don't throw away that kettle, use it as a little fishbowl. It makes mm -hmm. an awesome fishbowl for your little fish to go around in and it it's big enough for the fish and for you to put a little plant. It's easy to clean. You can also use a coffee pot. You can even use a, a coffee plunger uh, to have a, a, the big one to be able to have your fish, little, little fish to swim around in. And then when you want to empty the water, you can empty out some of the water and then refill slowly and you can clean your water very easily with your fish. It also prevents the cat from sticking its paw in and helping itself to your fish. <laughs> so it's a very clever way of keeping your, your fish happy and you. And you can put it in your kitchen. You can put it in anywhere. It's just such a novel idea. Now, I have an old cup which my mum gave me from my grandma. So this thing dates back into the 1800s. And mm. I love this bowl, but it gathers dust. And all it's doing is sitting on the shelf gathering dust. Instead of gathering dust, just turn it into a candle, but a nice scented candle. And then so that when you are not using the candle in it, the smell of the scent that you've made the candle permeates the room and it gives the room that lovely smell, a scent, not smell. Smell is a derogative term, the scent that can come through your room. And if you find that the scent starts to dissipate and disappear, you can always just put a few drops of um, the oil or the essence that you used in the candle 
that will be absorbed by the wax and you will continue to hear the to hear to smell the to, the beautiful aroma so that is a very good use there is another use coming up later on of these beautiful old cups the last thing is your cheese grater your cheese grater has seen better days um, it's been used for years by the family now it's time to be tossed don't, don't toss it paint it nicely in a color that suits your room use some cup hooks at the bottom with just a little ball on the cup hook to make it look pretty and now you have a stand to hold your earrings and it holds a lot of earrings because it's got four sides and you can just hang your favorite earrings on it and you can think okay these are my sort of spring earrings um, I'll wear these ones these are my summer earrings I can change and you can alternate if you've got a variety of earrings to wear and so it's a lovely way. My, my grandchildren sort my earrings onto one of these. Then when they've gone, I take it off. And the next time they come, they've got to first sort the earrings and then they can put them on again. And they have great fun playing with that. Any questions, any thoughts? Right. Now, here we've got our knives and forks and spoons. I have some spoons that were made with the coins. Now I will never use those spoons uh, for my coffee and tea. They're just too ornate, they're, they're just so different. So instead I've turned them into key holders and put them onto blocks and I've arranged them in a pattern and all the keys hang on there and it's so easy to see. And now they've got a use because the coins are my son's birthdays, my, my birthday, uh, my husband's birthday, our wedding anniversary date, the, the years, not the, not the actual day, but the years. And so then you've got coins that come from those ears, and now they've got a use, uh, these spoons have now got a use, instead of living in the bottom of a drawer doing nothing. If you've got an old picture frame, and you're not sure what to do with it, what you can do is take your picture frame, or oh, my picture frame's at the bottom here, I forgot to take it out, I knew there were, there's always something I forget to take out. Uh, right, we've got an old picture frame. What I've done is I've put a board at the back of the picture frame and I've taken pictures of my children and my grandchildren and put them all together on here. And I can change them whenever I want to. I open it up and I change it as the children grow. And we've got a large family. My husband has nine children. I have two. They've all got family of their own now and so every month they send us photos and updates of how the families are changing and so on so although we've got pictures down the passage so I've take, turned them into pictures and we change the pictures in the passage then those pictures go in my picture box and then I utilize those again to do trays and things like that and I did a lovely one for a friend not so long ago. I got her family to give me a whole lot of photos of her and her children, and I made it into a tray for her, all out of an old picture frame. It was so well received because it was it had been made by me. It meant it was I thought about it, and it was something special. She can now take her tea and coffee every day and go and sit and look at those pictures. And she can change the pictures too. I've shown her how as, as new pictures come in, she can place new pictures into her tray. And it's a lovely way of utilizing old frames. You can put pretty wrapping paper if you like as well. Now, I'm sure along the way you had these shoe holders that hung on the back of the door or you've still got your shoe holders. Instead of putting shoes in them, we put snacks. Now, my husband and I like in the afternoon to have our cup of coffee and a snack, a biscuit or something. So we then put the kind of snacks that we like into it. Or if we know the grandchildren are coming, we'll take our snacks out and put a variety of snacks in for them. And they can then go to the cupboard and choose a snack of their choice from the snack pack. 
We often have biscuits and cheese in there. There's a variety of things. There's quite a lot you can fit into those. And so we put, we keep topping up so that we don't have to keep finding the right box at the top. Which one do we want now? There they are right in front of us. And you've got a choice. So it's a nice way of using your old shoe holder. If you've got a baking tray, then, and it's, you're not going to use it again, you can spray it a nice color because it might have gone a little rusty. And then you can put small items into it. You can take the same thing and put it into a drawer that you often get on, on your desk, a thin little drawer at the top. Now, I put those into the thin little drawer at the top because you can't really put very much in them. They're too narrow. And then I put my gem clips and um, my paper fasteners and anything else that is small that can live in there. So when I want it, even an eraser, sharpeners, all those, when I just open my drawer, everything is there. They've each got their own little hole that they are sitting in. You can use the shallow pans or even the deep pans. Both work equally well. The one at the bottom uh, is made out of an old warming, one of those warming plates that you have taken out the element at the bottom because it doesn't work, placed a piece of board at the bottom, and then just taken some balsa wood uh, and put it up the sides because I wanted it deep enough to be able to bury my knives into it. Then you take your skewers and you fill it with skewers. And then you've got your sides that hold those skewers in place. Otherwise, they're inclined to fall because they're much longer than a toothpick. If you're wanting to put short things in, then toothpicks work very nicely. But for a long knife, I would definitely use skewers. And then you, you pack your balsa wood with your skewers and your knife can then go in very easily. It's a lovely knife holder. Any questions? Any words? No? Okay. All right. Now, let's continue. We are again going to use our grater. And this time we're going to turn it into a light. It gives you a lovely diffused light coming out the sides, but quite a strong light dropping down. So if you hung it over a place where you served food, it would really work because you get the pretty light at the top, but the strong light showing down on the food that you are serving. You can also use an old suitcase, put it on the wall. And then all you do is put some shelves in. You can get somebody to cut the wood the right size to make a, like a box that goes inside it. And you can glue those in very nicely. And then you just use the latch of your suitcase to close your, your cupboard. And I stuck a mirror when I had it in South Africa. I just stuck a mirror on with really strong glue, that, that almost cement glue. It never fell off. And now I've got a cupboard with a, a mirror and I've still got all my memories because that was a wonderful suitcase. I traveled right throughout Europe with that case uh, when I was young and it gave me a lot of memories. You again can use your picture frame, but this time you take cord or string or rope or twine, anything that you have, and you put it across and you tie it. You can make a little hole or, uh, and tie it through. Then using pegs, not I wouldn't use the big pegs. I use those baby pegs that you can get at the craft shops. And then you pe peg up your pictures and you can keep changing your pictures on that peg. One of the people in the class a while ago said her son's girlfriend had done just this. And every month she took a photo or they took a photo and they added one photo every month. So at the end, they had a whole year of photos going from when they started of the year to where they are now. 
And so they were able to keep a record and be able to talk about where they'd been and what they'd done. So that was a young person's mementos, but it doesn't mean you can't do your own. You can also put up pictures of trips that you've taken before and just go down memory lane with those looking at all the things oh look we went here oh we were on a boat there uh, can you remember how cold it was when we did this and so you are able to talk to friends you're able to talk to partners about things that you have done and when you've tired about of looking at that particular set of pictures pop them away and take out another set at another stage, maybe even a year later, bring out those ones again and have another look at them. So it becomes like a moving gallery of pictures. If you played uh, tennis or badminton or squash, the by now the uh, strings have gone. So you take all the strings out, you go wandering off back to your favorite glass place, ask them to put, cut a piece of, glass, of mirror the right size, put it in and hang it on the wall as a feature. Whoever you played badminton with or against will come and say, oh, I remember that. Wow, have you still got, I've still got my racket. Maybe I must do something with my racket. And so it sparks all sorts of beautiful memories. Now, as over the years, we collect books of every description. Sometimes we don't want to part with those books. So you can either make a small pile, which will become a table, a small little square table or round. You just put a piece of glass on top and you make sure that you can see the, the spines of the books. Very important to see the spine because if you want to look up one of those books again, you just take the glass off, pull out the book you require and you can put the glass back on again. Add a different book in its place if that one is the one you want for a while and you are then able to use it. You can even make a counter in the kitchen if you've got enough books for that. But always turn the spine facing outwards. Uh, in this picture, they haven't done that. And so you have no idea what those books are. It makes far more sense to turn them around so that you are able to see what you are looking at. Any questions? Right. Now, those old cups we were talking about earlier. Cups, saucers, teapots, milk jugs, sugar bowls, all of these can be used. They obviously don't have holes in them, so you can't put many plants in them, but you can put succulents in. Succulents do not require a lot of water. One spray once a week will do more than enough for them and they will be very, very happy. So you won't overwater them because anything that doesn't have a hole, there is this chance of overwatering and then the poor plant drowns and that's really not fair on the plant. So you could plant different succulents in different things and place them in different places around the room. Or you make a beautiful display of them, just like you would have made a display of your teapot, your milk jug, and a few um, cups and saucers. Do that. Set a tea table, but set a tea table as a display table with your, flower, with your plants growing in it. You can use your old colanders and just paint them up with a bit of acrylic paint. And there you are ready. Now they've already got holes in them. So there's no chance of the plant um, drowning. What I do is I put a little bit of thin gauze around the bottom so that the sand doesn't fall through. I don't want to lose all my good soil. So I just put a little piece of gauze and put some stones on top which then holds it firm and also gives a good drainage area. Then I put my soil in and my plants and hang them up. They really do make a wonderful, lovely present to give to somebody. 
If you do macrame, you can make macrame going up. Very, very beautiful. Really does look nice. Your old watering can. What do you do with an old watering can? Well, you paint it up. What I did was I put um, some soil in the very bottom of it and then put in a, um, a, some ivy and let the ivy trail out through the spout. So it looked like it was pouring water from it. And then I put pretty flowers at the top and hung it up outside. It really does make a beautiful display. And again, you can certainly make um, it, it your teacup with your candle, using beeswax, using anything that you wish to make a really nice candle. Any ideas? Any thoughts? Glad to have you back, Gwendolyn. Right. Now, you've got grandchildren. What do you do with some of their first items? Well, a little baby shoe can be turned into a pin cushion or a cushion for um, toothpicks. You can pop some toothpicks in there as well. You can just make a little hole in the center and put the whole container of toothpicks in there. Looks really nice. You can take bits of their clothing, bits of their blankets, and turn it into a feely, touchy book if you are a person who enjoys sewing. Um, you can also make the old cot into something really special. You've had the cot. What do you do with it? Turn it into a desk. Just put a piece of wood across the bottom and then take one side of the cot out. You've now got a board place to hang. You've got a place to hang up all the different things you want. You've got a place to write on and the chairs fit in very comfortably underneath the cot. And it's perfect to be able to use and do. The changing table can go outside and become a planting table. Lots of space to plant on and a place for you to have your water coming into your basin. Your bottles, tall ones, short ones, it doesn't matter. You could turn them into snow globes. And what you can do is take a picture each year and then add, make a new snow globe. Snow globe with the new picture. You take a picture and you laminate it. You then cut round the picture but not right against the picture. Make sure there is some plastic all the way around. You don't want the water to be able to seep in and ruin the picture. And then you attach it to the bottom of the to the lid. Uh, then you make a mixture of glycerine and water and I do give you the recipe for that and a bit of glitter or little snowflakes, put the water in, put your picture in, close it, and then turn it the right way up. And now suddenly you've got a snow globe. You can do a snow globe of all different members of the family, and you can have the family with you at Christmas in a snow globe form, particularly if they can't be with you. You can make one for each person, put them on the mantelpiece, and then you've got them there. They are there. Get a recent photo. Now you've got a recent photo of your family with you, and you are able to put those up on the mantelpiece for Christmas. So it feels like the family is with you. Any questions? Right. Oops, lost myself for a second. Now, hobby corner, things that you used, uh, that you had as hobbies and things that you can use to create your hobby corner. You can have your old piano. If you've got a really big wall, you can mount your piano on the wall. It makes a stunning display. You can make it into a bookshelf. You can make it into all sorts of things. You can add a mirror at the back of it. It's the sky's the limit but you've got to have a decent sized space. You can use your old uh, cross stitch rings to create a place to keep everything you need for a craft you are doing. 
You just make yourself little pockets. And I've got one of these little handheld sewing machines and I zip up all the little things I need with my little handheld. And then you put it tightly into the ring of the cross stitch. And then you can add all the things you want to put into it. And then you hang it up. And when you're about to do that particular craft, everything is there. Take it off the wall. You've got everything in one place. and You don't have to go scrabbling for what you're looking for. Your wrapping paper. Turn an old stool upside down. Put some wheels on it. You can hang your sticky tape on it with Velcro. You can hang your scissors on it. You can take all your rolls of wrapping paper, roll them tight, and then use a toilet, a, a third of a toilet roll to just put it over them. It keeps it nice and firm. It then doesn't fall all over the place and get graunched and uh, get all crumpled. Uh, and then you are able to do to keep all of them there in one place. Another way with your wrapping paper is to put it in an old suitcase. Put the sticky tape there, put a pair of scissors there. You want to put all your ribbons, anything you're wanting to do, pop them in there. And when you want to do wrapping, fetch your suitcase. Everything is there, including all types of wrapping paper that you have. If you're wanting a storage place in order to store different crafts or to show off the crafts you've been making, you can use crates. And all you do is stand the crates on end, three up, and it makes three really nice shelves that don't take up too much space. And depending on the color of your room, you can up them to that color or turn them white or make them any color you want. Acrylic paint works wonders on there and turns them into something really interesting. The last one is using a pegboard. By using a pegboard, you can create a space for a large number of things. You can put buckets at the bottom using just pegs that are glued to the buckets, or uh, and then the buckets can, can hook on to there. You can use old um, milk bottle containers to put your bigger things in. If you've taken a milk bottle, that one's full. Let me take one that's not too full. I use my milk bottle to put all my bits and pieces in like this. But what you do is you would cut it about there uh, so that you've got a nice deep one. And then that can be hooked on, with a, just make a hole in the back, hook it on. And now you've got a place to hang deeper things that you want. So you can choose what sort of things you want. And then you put either little hooks in there or you put little dowels in to hold the different things. If you're wanting to do the different types of ribbon, um, I think that's in the other room. I forgot about that. Let me just double check. Now I've got one of them here. You can use your Tic Tac containers. That holds ribbon, holds all sorts of things. And you can attach it, uh, just pop it into a container there. Or if you've taken one that's got um, oh, gem clips and so on in them. Let me just find you one back here. Uh, yeah, there's one. This one has split pins in it. You get a container, it's got split pins in. Once you've finished with them, this has a hook on it. So now you can put all small things and hook them up on your wall. So now everything is in a small space, but everything is there that you would want for whatever crafting you're going to be doing. So it's a lovely way of keeping things in one place. Uh, and and you can just toilet rolls fit on there very nicely as well. You just put a fairly long dowel coming out, slide the toilet roll on. It hangs below. Uh, grab a toilet roll for you. There we are. And there's a toilet roll. So you have your dowel. I'm going to use my pencil. You put your dowel on like that. It's against the wall. And now I can put pencils in here. I can put all sorts of things I want. It's now a hanging space with things inside it. So that is also very, very useful. Doesn't take up a lot of space, but can hold a large amount of things. So all in all, you can keep a lot of stuff in a very 
small space in order for you to do your hobbies. This is an old shirt that has been pulled in with elastic tightly at the bottom. The top is just knotted. And what I do with that is I peg that up on the, the peg, uh, on the wash line and my pegs are all inside. I can open up the bottom and just take out the pegs I want. The elastic holds the rest in place. I just put my hand in, take what I want and away I go. And that works very nicely as well as a container particularly if it's a shirt you've had a lot of memories with. Any questions? Okay, All right. I was asked in my very first class, what on earth can you do with bottle tops? Well, bottle tops can be used for so many things. You can use your bottle tops from a party or a number of parties to make a table where everybody that was at the party brings you some bottle tops and then you can create a design with all the different color bottle tops and when they come they go oh there's my bottle top that I brought you remember when we did and this becomes a wonderful talking point you can also use them to put your cups on they make very good cup stands both the metal ones and the plastic ones make great cup uh, stands. The metal ones you can put around a mirror, you can put them around um, anything that you wish to, a clock. You can certainly turn them into wonderful things. You can put them outside as well. And by putting them outside, you can hang them off an old lid and they tinkle. They don't make a very loud noise. You get this beautiful tinkle, tinkle, tinkle type sound because as they bump up against each other. And it's quite easy for them to be able to flow. And you just take bits of chain and you just join them together with bits of chain. You do have to make a hole in it, but they're actually quite easy to make a hole in. And then you have your chain going all the way down. I've also seen it where somebody's glued it to the chain, so it left the chain solid and just glued the, the lids to it, except for at the very bottom, it worked just as well. So there are many ways you can do it. You can do a tray using them. You can make a birdhouse that uh, has got bottle tops as the lid and corks as the, the hand, the piece to go with your hand and you've also got you can use your bottle tops to play games you can make your own game and have a game of drafts or a game of checkers using bottle tops so bottle tops really do make for amazing things I am not quite finished the next page that's why it's not in yet and I'm doing one which explains all the different things you can do with corks. The only cork one that I have at the moment in in the talk is the one this one here we made it into a bird feeder or you can make it into a cork board. My first class I show the cork board and so many people asked about it. So I decided to include it in, and I've included how to do it as well. You'll get it as a, a take home afterwards. What you do is you take an old picture frame. You can paint it, sand it, make it look really pretty. You then can make bits to go round the frame and you can make them out of cork and it does show you how to make them out of cork. You can use a champagne bottle cork as a vase at the bottom with a little ribbon round it. The sky's the limit as to what you want. You can then choose if you want to use your corks whole or half. You also choose whether you want to cut your corks or not and use them endwise, and you can paint them as well, all sorts of colors depending on what. Now, if you don't have enough corks, you can either go to the local pub and ask them to collect the corks. But look, a lot of bottles don't have corks anymore, but a lot do. So you can get them to collect the corks. You can also buy corks online. 
But I would be sure to put a cork that has some value to me, some sentimental reason about it, somewhere in the whole collection. And then you would lay them inside. Don't glue them in first. Lay them in and look at it for a couple of days. Is this exactly what I want? Or do I want more here? Do I want less here? How do I want it? And you will then lay it out. And when you're happy with that layout, you will then glue those corks onto a piece of board at the back of your picture frame. And then that is the way it stays. Then you can put it up and use it at any time. It really does make for a wonderful board and a lovely way of keeping things. Um, so one of the ways that you do the different things is to cut them. Now, I have seen in a number of tutorials, it's best to soak them for about a while, about two hours before you cut them. Your corks will cut so much easier if they are soaked. Then you can let them dry and pack them into wherever you want. But while they are wet corks, they are much more malleable and less likely to crack and splinter into little bits. You can carve them using a, a sharp knife. You can carve all sorts of shapes into your cork and then paint it with um, any of the high, highlighters work very well. And also your um, Cokey pens will also, you get thick ones and thin ones and all sorts. You can cut those, you can use those to color it according to your room. I'm not a pink person, so you won't find anything pink in my house. You'll find blue and green, plenty, but you won't find pink. Uh, so I would do one that's got blues and greens and possibly even yellows or maybe red in it. But, and so you do it according to what suits you and once you're happy with it and you're sure you're happy with it that's when you can start sticking it and it becomes a really great cork board any questions any thoughts Right. Well, those are just some of my ideas. I hope that somewhere amongst this, you found something that you thought, I can use that. I can do that. That is my aim, is that you pick up one thing that you can go and try. Did you find anything you liked, Gwendolyn? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Melinda, thumbs up, thumbs down. Neither. Okay. All right. Now, let's see. Um, if you've got something you would like to add or say, please feel free to put it onto the feedback. It comes back. We get to, uh, to hear from Get Set Up if there are new ideas for us to change or add to our content. Um, and then if you want a copy of the um, uh, recording, please request it at help at getsetup.io and then you will be able to um, watch it at your leisure. There are others in the same uh, series. There's overall uh, upcycling, there's gardening time, there's upcycling waste and also creating from waste where we do classes on uh, toilet rolls for adults and then there's one for children. There's also uh, pigs and uh, popsicle sticks for adults and children. And I've just upgraded the one on tin cans and um, paper to an adult class now where you make different things during the class. So there's certainly, this is all the feedback we've been getting, asking for more adult things. And so we, I'm turning them into two different classes. So you've got a choice of things to do. Well, if you have, I'm going to stop sharing now. If there's anything you would like to say or not, thank you very much, everyone. Great to have you in the class. And yes, Gwendolyn. I enjoyed the class. 
Great. I'm glad. Did you find one thing you would like to do? I like the bottle caps. Uh-huh. Good. Yes, I like Good. that. Mm -hmm. Ah, excellent. So that is awesome. I'm very glad you were able to find something. All right. Thank you so much both for being in class. I look forward to seeing you again sometime. Have an awesome evening. Bye for now. Bye now. Thank you.